This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Wenatchee is gorgeous in the spring with its lush green rolling hills, abundant wildflowers everywhere, and the views of the Columbia River. The local food scene offers an abundant selection of authentic international cuisines featuring the unique farm fresh ingredients of the region. Wenatchee is also home to award-winning wines, handcrafted hard ciders, and a talented handful of local brewers producing fine craft beers. Visit Wenatchee, the heart of Washington State. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. We're celebrating 50 years, and we've got that 50th anniversary gear for you. Oh, yeah. We well, don't want. need the hoodie right now. Well, you no. might need it, you know, at some point. You know, and maybe you just want to protect yourself from the harmful sun rays, and then you would need the yeah, hoodie. But the go. T-shirts come in handy with the weather that we have right yeah. now. Now, it's a light zip hoodie, which means that, you know, I mean, it's good for the transition time. Just when you don't know, like, is it summer yet? Is it fall yet? That's where the light zip hoodie comes in handy. And, of course, yeah, the knit candy. We got the, you know, the beanies of the trucker caps. And like Steve said, this is the short sleeves. I mean, there and there's a lot of styles. And it's all with that gold 50th anniversary rock logo. You got to get these because they are a limited edition and you can get them today. Celebrate our 50th anniversary. Go buy them today at the Rock Shop at KISW.com. Let's play B-Mix. It's time to play the jam. Yeah. So everybody scream his name. B-Mix. Don't be a loser. Whoa. B-Mix. You're a loser. It is time. Wednesday. Did you just do a juggalo whoop whoop? Yes. I, I, no, no reason. All right. No All reason. right then. Okay then. <laughs> well, it is whack it Wednesday. It's juggalo Wednesday. Juggalo Wednesday. That's not going to be a thing. No, no. Whack no, no. it. Oh, but yes, it juggalo. is. <laughs> whack it Wednesday. Whack it. Let me see everybody. Whoop, whoop, Mr. Wednesday. Wednesday. All right. Whoop, whoop. Oh, my goodness. Already off the rails. Let's just get to our contestant today. We got Travis in up. Travis, are you there? Whoop, whoop. That's right. <laughs> whoop, whoop. There you go. It's a right. thing now. Uh, all right, Steve, get out of here. Get out. Whoop, whoop. For those playing at home, Travis will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Travis, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Let's whack it. Which actor played the inventor father in the movie Honey, I Shrunk the Kids? Oh, gosh. Pass. How many provinces are there in Canada? Four. No. Five. No. No. Which branch of the U.S. Armed Forces do the Blue Angels belong to? Navy. Yes. J-Lo starred in the movie Made in Where? Manhattan. Yes. Which planet is named after the Roman god of the sea? Neptune. Yes. Which artist won a Grammy in the 90s with the song Virtual Insanity? Yes. What kind Rick of... Moranis. Uh, yes, it was Rick Moranis. Which kind of lettuce should be used in a classic Caesar salad? Romaine. Yes. Who became Yusuf Islam in 1977? Yes. Which famous singer was nicknamed Old Blue Eyes? Uh... uh... Sinatra. Yes, metamorphic and igneous are both types of what? Repeat the question. Metamorphic and igneous are both types of what? 
plasma? No. One, oh. two, three, four, five, six. Correct. Okay then. Well, you know, not a not a bad score. No, no, not a bad score. Not a great score, but definitely a score. Yeah, that's a fact. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we'll have to see how Steve scores on this one. Whether he gets uh, better or worse. Lots of scoring. So much scoring. Steve, are you ready? Whoop, whoop. Okay, whoop. yes, fine. Whoop. Okay. Whoop in the world. You know what? <laughs> really, uh, it is a good day to celebrate because they did release the trailer for the 2021 Gathering of the Juggalos yesterday. It's back. Uh, no, are we not going? We're not. Apparently no, not. It's in a month. It's I'm, in a month. Oh, only in a month? Oh, yeah. I don't have time to prepare for it then. They're really gathering quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I know my boy Clownvis is going to be there, so uh, yeah. I was thinking about it, but since it's only a month away, I'm just not going to be able to do it. Is he performing or just gathering? Um, I think he does a little bit of performing there. I and hope. I, yeah, right? Whoop, whoop. Steve? A whoop, a whoop. All right, now you're ready. Which actor played the inventor father in the movie Honey, I Shrunk the Kids? Rick Moranis. Yes. How many provinces are there in Canada? Ten. Yes. Nice. What branch of the U.S. Armed Forces do the Blue Angels belong to? The Navy. Yes. J-Lo starred in the movie Made in Where? Manhattan. Yes. Which planet is named after the Roman god of the sea? What? Which planet is named after... Venus. No. Oh. Um, Jupiter. No. Um, Sag- no, wait. Um, <laughs> Mars. No. Which oh. artist won a Grammy in the 90s with the song Virtual Insanity? Jamiroquai. Yes. What type Good of video. lettuce should be used in the classic Caesar salad? Iceberg. No. Romaine. Yes. Who became Yusuf Islam in 1977? Pat Stevens. Yes. Which famous singer was nicknamed Old Blue Eyes? Not Jenna Jameson. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> uh, Frank Sinatra. Yes. Metamorphic and igneous are both types of what? Rock. Yes. And Steve, you win with a nice score. Six to nine. Oh, nice. nice. Sorry, Travis, but at least you won uh, in a memorable way. Yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yes. That's right. Nice. Steve conjures the power of the Juggalos to get himself a Whoop Whoop Wednesday win. It's Whoop Whoop Wednesdays. Everyone's texting in right now. Oh, are they really? Yes. Uh, come, come on. on. Are we going to do it for the Juggalos? I guess, whoop whoop I guess we have had Whack It Wednesday for a while. <laughs> Is it time to change to Whoop Whoop Wednesday? <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Wacky will be sad, but if that's what we have to do. <laughs> do we have to put on the makeup for Wednesdays? Uh, yes, you absolutely yeah, have you to. you do, Steve. Yeah, yes. you do. Yeah. You gotta have like a filter on Snapchat or one of those places that make you look like an ICP member. Well, I've seen the ones where they do the, it's the clown uh, face. So, I mean, I mean, that's close enough. <laughs> They're evil clowns, so... Okay, well... Uh, the only one you did not get correct, Travis did. The planet that is named after the Roman god of the sea is Neptune. Oh, and apparently Vicky found the Juggalizer. The Juggalizer. <laughs> the juggalizer. <laughs> I a little while ago, so I'm hoping it's still up. I'm going to do some more uh, digging here. Ah. Yeah, yeah. If you find that, yeah, I'd definitely do a Juggalizer on that. That'd be fun. New profile pic. Congrats, Steve, on your win. Good job, Steve. Should we all have like juggalo names for them from Wednesday? Like dead BJ could be like Shaggy Two BJ and like, like Violent Migs. Violent okay, Migs. Shaggy Two BJ. That seems like I accept that that guy Shaggy doesn't like me. Do I have to? Can I pick another one? All right, Shaggy's, Shaggy's kind of like my nemesis. You could be BJ Lyrical because I was a former member. D oh, Lyrical. all right. Well, BJ Lyrical sounds good. Right. I like lyrics. Shaggy Makes Two sense. Danny. Shaggy, okay. yeah, there you go. Or Danny Two Dope. Oh, there it is. Danny Two Dope. Danny Two Dope. Oh, wow. wow. Boy. Instead of uh, Vicky, you could be there was a former member called Grease E. Grease. <laughs> I'm looking. Even... I'm looking actually for a gen- name generator. See if they have one. I think Vic E would be good, right? Like Vic E. Okay, maybe not. I like no, I like that. <laughs> I do like All right, there we go. It's in. It's happening. So I want to know what is a juggalo? That's a fan of the insane clown posse. Duh. Yeah. How did you not know that? Ah, uh, well, you know there are some people that don't know that. Well. Now they now. know. Now you know. Well, happy Whoop Whoop uh, Wednesday, BJ. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, you started it. So you're going to have to say it every... Uh, you're going to have to be the Whoop Whoop now. All right. All hey, right we got to hey. find like, a good sound... Uh, there's got to be a sound clip of one of them saying Whoop there Whoop. You go. Also, are you going to have the talk with Mr. Wacky? Oh, uh, you know, Mr. Wacky's going to be all right. He's tired, man. It's the summer. Oh, really? Oh, it's almost okay. 90 degrees. It's hard all for right. that, that little inflatable arm to keep going. Okay. <laughs> oh, really? All right. Uh... 
And uh, Metallica, um, so speaking of music, how about they got this big... I didn't know about this. They have a massive reissue of the Black Album coming this September, September oh, 10th. Great. What does that mean? It's like a 30-year anniversary or something like that that's going to make us feel old? I, I think you're right. It's got to be 30 at least. It's got to be. Yeah. It's not 40, but it's 30, right? The 80s? It's definitely not 40. Well, let's uh, see, 91? It would be 25 it would, it, or 30 or It 30. would be 91, right, if it was 30 years old. It came out in 91. Yep. Okay, there you go. And it came out on August 12th, 1991. Wow. Okay, so there, you know, there'll be uh, a few days later, but. Oh, there dude, you go. I remember when I first, they, they first released Enter Sandman. It was on MTV, and this is before, obviously, YouTube or being able to just get anything on demand. And they would tell you, we're going to play the Metallica video at 4 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Oh, I remember those days, yeah. And you bet your ass, I would stop whatever I was doing to get in, get in front of that television because I needed to see that music video oh, every yeah. single time. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I remember the the, the appointment uh, video watching. Yes. Uh, this is a special edition, though. You know, you're like, okay, what are they going to do for the 30th anniversary? They are doing um, 53 different artists covering the songs from that album. Right, so I see releasing the whole album. I thought it was pretty cool. So you got all the stuff that you'd want. Like, it's like a box set type of a thing. But then also they've enlisted the help of, like, a bunch of random artists. Like, not rock artists. Some are rock, like Volbeat. I think it's a part of this. But, like, some of them are, like, country artists and even Miley Cyrus. Which we know Miley's got a love for rock. And so anything, anytime anybody asks her to do anything rock-related, she will do. Because she just is a big fan of the genre and really wants to do more of it. Um, so I'm interested to hear how Miley sounds on a Metallica tune. Um, and also, uh, she, uh, Chris Stapleton, well, he's a country dude, right? Yeah, really good yeah. country dude, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, and so they're both doing covers of Nothing Else Matters. Volbeat is going to be doing Don't Tread on Me. And I don't know who John Party is. Do you guys know John Party? I believe a country artist as well. He's doing where, uh, he's doing Wherever I May Roam. So th that's just, some of the 53 different artists covering the tunes from the Black Album for the 30th anniversary. Uh, here's a little bit of what that might sound like. I never realized how great uh, you could turn a Metallica song into a country song. What? That sounded awesome. Yeah, right? I, yeah. yeah. I'm surprised about how much I like that. Wow. And I like how you, it's just like someone put the Volbeat filter through it. You know, because Volbeat oh. always sounds like Volbeat. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so the John Party, man, I'm kind of into what, uh, that one really sounded, that was pretty cool. And I guess the Miley Cyrus song features Elton John on it. Wow. Yo-Yo uh, Ma. Damn. Robert Trujillo, obviously, is now the bassist of Metallica, so that's kind of cool that he's playing bass on this. He wasn't the bassist at that time. And Chad Smith on the drums from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh. So, so that's what it's going to be. That's so the lineup for Nothing Else Matters. So that's the th that's part of uh, how we get so many artists involved, is a lot of them will be musically involved, not just lyrically involved. Uh, so that's really My cool. Morning Jacket's also doing a version of Nothing Else Matters. Uh, man, oh man, they got Darius Rucker. He's doing a version of Nothing Else Matters. What? like... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten different versions of Nothing Else Matters. Wow. That I guess that's be, a big song for people. Yeah, that seems to be the one where the most uh, people are covering. That and The Unforgiven. Cage the Elephant's going to cover that. I'm actually really... Ooh, that's Ooh, really? And Flatbush Zombies, they're a really good hip-hop group. I, I'm very confused that they're how they're going to pull off The Unforgiven as a hip-hop song, but I'm, I want to hear it. Yeah, I think it's... Cool. Royal it's, Blood's doing a song. What a great idea. Has this been, I mean, I mean, for an anniversary album, has this ever been done before? Where not, they've got a bunch of covers involved? Not like this. Yeah, this is, a, boy, this could be a trend. Ooh, Weezer's doing Under Sandman, and so is Ghost. I want to hear that. Man, I want to hear Weezer. Just because Weezer's, you know, Weezer. Do, like, we, Weezer gets such grief for some of the covers they do, but this could be really, I don't know. I, I, I'm a little worried, but I'm also intrigued. Corey Taylor's going to cover a Holier Than Thou, because, you know, you can't do something if Corey Taylor's not involved in it. That's a good point. This is actually yeah. pretty interesting. I, I, I mean, I've seen, like, albums tribute, like, Kiss did a, 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 a Kiss covers thing, where it was, like, you know, had Garth Brooks covering their music, Lenny Kravitz, and it was a really cool, like, uh, compilation album. But it wasn't for any specific album. This is, I, I dig the idea of them having people do the same song different ways because then you get to hear like their interpretation of it. Damn.
And this, this, this uh, will this get you to get the box set? No, you absolutely do not. I'm not. Oh, I, all right, I have right. a child. I've had to spend money on BJ unless she asks for it. But I hope it's on streaming <laughs> services. <laughs> well, I think that can be arranged. At this point, we don't know if she if she can write on her own. But you know what? You you can say, look what Tatum wrote. Ooh, I have a Metallica shirt that she can wear. While yeah. Asking. Look and, what Tatum wants aw, for Christmas. With the beauty of video <laughs> editing, I can I could voice over Herb saying, "Daddy, I would like Metallica for birthday." This is a fantastic idea. You got look, her birthday's in December, so you got some time to um, <clears throat> you know make this happen. Birthday and Christmas. David Gahan also covers nothing else matters. Isn't that wow. the dude from Depeche Mode? Don't know. Dave Gahan. Rev- oh, you I, I could have sworn you said another name. I think Dave Gahan. I think you might be right. Dave Gahan. I uh, think you're right. Dash think, mode. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I don't know what I, I thought. I heard David Gahan. I go, I don't know who the hell David Gahan is. Oh, that's a holiday. <laughs> yeah, that's <yeah. laughs> David Gahan to y'all. Uh, it is time for listeners on the loose. This is where you, yes, you get to pick the topic. You get to guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. We got your calls. We got your texts. We'll take them at 920 on The Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW. The Rock of Seattle. It's Listeners on the Loose, brought to you by Spartan Plumbing. Listeners on the Loose, where you pick the topic, you guide the show at 206-421-ROCK. You can also text us at 77999. And when you be vocalizing, make sure that you follow Steve's rule. It's a simple rule, BJ. That's to show some energy and bring it. Otherwise, we're going to have to gong you. And then say goodbye. Goodbye, old friend. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. So I want to know if, BJ, did you see your girl Avril? Uh, she did a TikTok with Tony Hawk. I did see that, actually. Wait, you're on TikTok? Uh, well, you know, people know I love Avril, so they sent me the video, but I didn't actually get on TikTok. <laughs> uh, Is she, like, going rever- like Benjamin Button going in reverse aging? Because she looks younger now than she has in, like, forever. Yeah. That's what confused me, because I was like, I think that's Tony Hawk, but then I was like, or is that a skater boy husband? But then is this an old video? I was really confused, because the dude looked a little older, but she looks the same. No, but she so- just hasn't aged. And I feel yeah. like Tony Hawk hit a point where he looks like, Obviously, he's not young Tony Hawk anymore, but then he just stopped aging. Like, he's just like middle-aged Tony Hawk for like the last 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. It's impressive. Yeah, how old is Avril? Because, I mean, it it is amazing that she looks... She looks like she's... Yeah, she looks like she's the same age when she first did Skater Boy. That's my guess. 36. 36, boom. Well, there is that conspiracy theory on the internet stating that she actually passed away and they used a body double. Oh, I believe that. Yeah, of course. That's been around for a while. I mean, All right, why not? Conspiracy theory, that's fact. Right. Yeah, come, you know, wait. facts are really, uh, real, they're really overrated. We don't need them anymore. So I'm going to say that's true. Okay. Wasn't that the, like, wasn't the, which Beatle was that, the, the rumor about Paul McCartney? Paul is dead. Yeah. That he's dead and it's yeah. like some guy that's pretending to be him. He was time. dressed in a different outfit, like when they were doing the Abbey Road cover. That's how people used to always say that everyone is dressed, you know, casually, but somebody's dressed like they've, they've been buried. And I think it was Paul or somebody uh, right. in, the, in that picture. It was all sorts of conspiracies on that, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so Paul and and Paul and Avril apparently both, Avril as well, yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes a lot of sense because I'll tell you right now, she either that she's made a deal with the devil or the or her makeup or whatever. I don't know what she, but I was I, I really wasn't sure if I was watching an old video or a new video. No, it seems like it's a new thing, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you need to get on the TikTok, and that maybe that's what keeps you. Young. Uh, do I really want to get on the TikTok though? <laughs> that, I mean, you could be like Vicky, just endless hours of entertainment. Oh my god, I I can't, I have to be careful what time I get on TikTok. I can't do it too close to bedtime, otherwise I won't sleep. Yeah, I'm I'm reading. I was just reading an article, and I have no idea how true it is, Vicky, because it was probably written by an older person that doesn't use TikTok. Um, but they're saying there's TikTok burnout that's happening for the co- for the contributors. I'm wondering, um, you know, or is it, it, have for you the, have, for the you creators? Still, yeah, the creators. Yeah, they're just they, they. I guess you have to put so much content up there, and it's no longer fun for a lot of them because it feels like a job. <laughs> I actually have a friend who may who is quote unquote TikTok famous. She's got over like a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand followers, and she says in order to get paid through TikTok, because a lot of people will quit their jobs because they see all this money coming in, but then once you hit a certain point, they will stop kind of featuring your videos to get viewed. So that way, you have to put out like five to eight videos a day to make any money wow and that's a lot of work yeah like my friend said she have to she has to put up like five videos i think she said to make 20 bucks a day yeah forget yeah. that yeah a different effort i was going to use but <laughs> yeah. both of them apply 
Yeah, yeah my buddies, are, I'm a, these wrestler guys that I'm friends with, uh, they're based in Vancouver. They're called uh, the Voros Twins, and mm-hmm. they're shockingly twins. And they're super awesome guys. And then during the pandemic, you know, obviously a lot of people couldn't do anything. So they started leaning into like TikTok and they, they, cat, they coined a phrase because they, they were trying to say something about uh, Da Vinci, but they called him Da Vinci and it spread like crazy. Oh, so, like, really? James Corden played the clip on his thing and it was like a TikTok video that just blew up because they're just kind of like these funny dudes and they have like a goofy kind of personality. And now there are like bigger stars in the world of TikTok than even wrestling. Like they have a million, fo- almost a million followers and Wow, over thirty something million people are watching their things. It's 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 stupid, but I didn't realize that they have to put up that much content. Yeah. Cause I'm the, I'm like on TikTok like once a month, and I'm like, let me see what's going on on the TikTok. And I'm yeah, like, hey, I, uh, <laughs> I like, this is too much. I get motivated to do like one or two videos, and it's usually to bug Joe, mm-hmm. and then uh, and that's it for about a month, and then I'm like, oh, I'll do another one. But whenever I go on, I don't hate it. Like no. there's some social media things that like I'm, yeah, some people are doing silly things on TikTok, but like. It's not miserable things being done by miserable people. It's like people just trying to make other people laugh. And I'm like, well, that, I think that's okay. Like, I think we need a little bit more of that on social media. People trying to entertain each oh, other. Oh, lucky for you, you didn't find the miserable TikTok. Or cute things like a puppy, a bird riding a puppy with chasing some ducks. <laughs> See, that's yeah, the kind is, of content I need oh, in my life. Yeah. 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 And Mickey it, just squealed. Yeah. And it, TikTok is very much catered to what you like. So I think they ask you at the <laughs> beginning, like, hey, what are your interests? And they will just start feeding you content. The more you like certain things, the more they'll feed you. So if you're miserable... It, you'll probably get miserable content. Oh, but that's I, why I got it. I get a lot of. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was like, Rev, what are you following? Like, hashtag yeah. miserable? That's how, that's how Facebook gets me. I only see the miserable comments out of the hundreds that are on a post. I always end up on ADHD TikTok, uh, Clean Talk, which is uh, where they do a lot of the cleaning and organizing videos, which really gets me amped up to clean. Oh, for all you Marie Kondo people. Right, basically. And I'm also on Bondage TikTok, so that's a weird variety. Shocking. Uh, okay, then. Oh, it kind of sums you up right there. Not yeah, it really does, doesn't it? It's like I mean, cleaning, bondage, and ADHD. Yeah, yeah. that All actually right. does something yeah, very well. I am surprised because <laughs> like, we have we have YouTube, but then eventually we have now like you porn or red tube. Uh huh. Is there like a rhymes with TikTok version oh, of TikTok? Yeah. Should be. Yeah. It's for hickory dickory dock. It's for people that are like maybe a premature. Yeah. So they don't need much more than like a seven second video. <laughs> wow. Honestly, there oh, needs I see to what be, you mean. There needs to be an adult TikTok because there's a lot of stuff you can't post on TikTok. You can't even say stripper because they'll start taking your video down. That's why none of my videos are up. Exactly. Oh, That's Steve. Why. Yeah, see, and we, 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 we now, now we know. What can we, we, exotic, exotic dancer, Steve, that'll do it. No, I know they, uh, one girl calls it like a strip dancing, like she, Shrek's work is what she says. So it sounds like you're working for Shrek. Oh, that's man. how they get away with it. I look that. like Shrek, so I guess I'm the pimp. You're all set. <laughs> but we can make a ton of money. If we can make a TikTok, but just for adults, no kids, we can do this, Steve. Seven seconds, it's all you need. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I've been saying since high school, man. <laughs> <laughs> here's, the pro- you know, I, here's the problem with me wanting to do stuff like this to try to make money as I listen to this podcast. So it's, it's, it's called the All In Podcast, and these guys are much smarter than I will ever be. But they, they unfortunately showed me behind the curtain the amount of money that YouTube and TikTok are making and then how much they're actually paying their content creators is, I mean, it is almost a crime. Yeah. Like, it, it is unbelievable. Like, YouTube's in the trillions and what they're paying might be maybe close to a billion for the, the what they pay back, but they're making trillions in return and TikTok's doing the same thing and I'm like, wow. I mean, it is. And now they're like, the government's getting involved. Like, is this really like, you know, we get paid to do what we do. And I feel like we get paid fairly for, you know, what the company makes. I mean, I know percentage wise what our show, you know, be able to, what it creates for the company and then what they pay us. And our company is way fairer than these other content creator businesses like YouTube and like TikTok. And the government's like, is this close to almost like really like massively taking advantage of people, but they kind of don't know and almost kind of don't care? It's uh, it's 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 a little chilling to just see how much money they're making in respect to what they pay out. Well, yeah, for a lot of them, I'm probably thinking like, oh well, like yeah, I started doing this just because I wanted attention. Now I'm getting money on top of the attention. So for probably some of these people on TikTok oh, or Steve. Instagram, they don't even really, they haven't really like zoned in on that. Some have, and maybe they're figuring it out. But you hit that on the head, Steve, because the article talked about one TikTok star. She said, she said, you know what? I get the attention that I want, but then five minutes later, it's they want something new and it's gone. And that's where the fatigue and burnout is coming in is they can never sustain the attention that they want. You know, it's like, okay, what have you done for me lately? Well, it's like, well, it was Instagram. Then they try at some point they were going to get rid of 
it's showing how many likes you get on a picture. Yeah. And I think they experimented that for like maybe like four seconds and then they realized that that's like going to kill their social media platform because that's what people want. They want to put up posts so they can see how many, you know what I mean? Like if all of a sudden you don't get that validation, then people are going to stop using your your social media page and then all of a sudden you're just done. On top of the fact that like, yes, you get paid through TikTok, but I think a lot of the money comes from getting sponsors. So I notice a lot of these people get sponsored by the same companies. It just, Different forms, different companies. Uh, Blue Chew? I feel like they sponsor everything. Yeah, no. basically. Uh, yeah, I saw the podcast surface, I listened yeah. to. I'm like, is that the demo that I'm in? People that have stiffy issues? Because wow. every, every oh. freaking commercial is for that. Oh, I thought that was uh, like a dog bone company or something. Blue Chew? Yeah. See, in my world, I feel like everyone knows what Blue Chew is because uh-uh. every wrestling podcast, I just think wrestling fans probably just, some of yeah. them can't perform. Mm. I'm shocking. Um, <laughs> but every. Like big name podcast has them as an advertiser. Interesting. That and Manscaped. So apparently we're just like not really good at trimming our our areas, and also they don't really perform all that well. So we need both things taken. Why well, they, well, they go hand in hand? They, <laughs> and, sort of speak, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. I just assumed that, and the other one that advertises a lot is that they they have like this warning of you being looking before you cross train tracks because people get hit by trains. So I'm like, okay, so we're a bunch of guys that have erectile issues that don't realize that a train is coming at us. That is a specifically yeah. odd commercial. Or oddly specific, like if you, yeah, hey, dude. don't get hit by trains. How many people are like listening to this podcast that could get hit by a train? Dude, they'd be like, warning, if you're standing on train tracks, you might want to get off them because you might get hit by a train. Pay attention. And I'm like, why do we need this warning? Oh, like, it's the wow. robots with their location services. They know you're near train tracks, Steve. I don't know what's going oh, on. There. Steve. <laughs> See, yeah. I keep getting the glass. Like, there's a lot of glasses companies online. You just put in your prescription. You can, like, order really, really cheap glasses, which I'm all for. So I just keep getting a lot of that. Am I getting a Yeah. Lot? You keep getting a lot of, like, uh, ads for what you already have a lot of times, too. That's a, uh, yeah. I've got plenty of Blue Chew, okay? I don't need any more of that. Do you? Uh, <laughs> I can send you a place to get a 15% uh, yeah. discount. Yeah, I give it out as Halloween candy. You know what I mean? Give everybody a happy night. It's, well, it's, I mean, the kids get their candy and the adults get their, you know, the blue chew. <laughs> That'd be great. You're like, here's a Snickers for you and this is for your father. Exactly. <laughs> and he will thank me. Uh, you pick the topic. You guide the show. It is listeners on the loose. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. More of your calls and more of your texts at 933 on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Wenatchee is gorgeous in the spring with its lush green rolling hills, abundant wildflowers everywhere, and the views of the Columbia River. The local food scene offers an abundant selection of authentic international cuisines featuring the unique farm fresh ingredients of the region. Wenatchee is also home to award-winning wines, handcrafted hard ciders, and a talented handful of local brewers producing fine craft beers. Visit Wenatchee, the heart of Washington State. 99.9 99.9 KISW, the rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic, you guide the show. 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. Uh, someone texted in a little uh, comment, a commentary on the Seattle Mariners. And oh. said, you know, last year the Mariners started out amazing, fell apart. This year seems like they started out bad and are now getting better. So maybe this is a good thing. Mm. Yeah, I, you know, I, I really can't tell anymore what's going on in baseball because. They all started you know, adjusting the way they swing the bat to to basically swing for the fences because the ball was so lively. Lots of strikeouts, but lots of home runs. Well, now that the ball's deadened, a lot of those folks are still swinging for the fences, and you're getting a lot of strikeouts and a lot of flyouts. So this is a weird year in baseball to know. And and boy, maybe the Mariners can take advantage of something like this. You know, where maybe they figure it out before anybody else does. Is they've got to adjust how they approach the offense. So we'll see. But uh, hey, look there. You know, a couple games over 500. They can still go for the wild card. They can still play a lot of those teams in the West that are ahead of them. And they could make up a lot of ground by just being a good team and beating the teams like the Athletics and the Angels and, you know, and, and, and like that. I mean, they, it could very well happen. And the, the Astros are tough, though. The Astros have a damn good offense. That's, that's the team that's going to be tough to beat. 
And who's the guy we got? Shed. I want, I want to see that guy continue to hit home runs. Shed Long Jr.? Yeah. That's a great name. That is it's a great, great name. name. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it like um, going, hitting a home run like going shed or is that a, is that a second yard it's going yard going yard yeah see when but, we played yeah, wiffle ball the shed was where our home run oh, was so we go. would yeah. say you just went shed yeah <laughs> so I just thought that was a saying I'm like man talk about a prophetic like name a parent gave you yeah, there's this uh, dude, think, Shed Long home run. Shed Long is a great name. Well, watching young players come up, I just got to see the number one baseball prospect make his first game last night in Tampa Bay. And that kid had a great night, including a three-run homer uh, that tied the game for the Rays. And, um, y- you know, it's pretty amazing. Like, this kid looks like the real deal. That's what I love about baseball is when you see a young player come up, this Franco kid. Uh, so, you know, I mean, the Mariners got a lot of good young kids on the team. You just don't, you know, you don't know what to make of people like that. I like this question. Someone just asked, uh, it's a sports question. Okay, if you had to pick one of our teams wins the championship in this next year, who do you want it to be? The Mariners, the Storm, the Sounders, the Seahawks, or the Kraken? You know, the Storm has had, I I mean, look, if you're a Storm fan, I don't know if this is Sue Bird's last year. I feel like every year it should be, but then she continues to Methuselah her way to greatness. Yeah, I think she's going to play forever. uh, But I feel like the Storm has had championships recently. They've had a few. Um, Yeah, so, I mean, you know, was it a couple couple years ago? And then then they're always a team that seems to be in it, too. Same thing with the Sounders, I hate to say, but they always seem to be in it, you know. Uh, yeah, so, the Storm have won championships in t- 2004, 2010, 2018, and 2020. So you know what? You're off the list. Wow. Yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> you're out. Enjoy your championships, ladies. And I mean, the Sounders, the same thing, man. Is like those guys have been have, have had great teams, and they've gone they've gone to the finals uh, okay. know, a bunch of times. So now we're down so, to three: Mariners, Seahawks, yeah. or Kraken. Yeah, and look. I want to see another championship with Russell Wilson. I really, really do. I'm, I, I'm afraid. I don't want to be this afraid, but I'm afraid. Was it those two years, the uh, the last two years, we're going to see them go to the Super Bowl with Russell? I hope not. I hope they figure it out. And, of course, I always want to see the Mariners win. And, um, well, yeah, of course, the Kraken. So I think the order would be Hawks, uh, Mariners, Kraken. But I feel like we're going to see. Here's what I believe. I believe it's going to be Kraken, Hawks, Mariners is what we're going to see for the order of out of those three teams, who's going to win the championship first? I, I was torn. I'm like, okay, well, I, I love, you know, obviously love the Seahawks and would love to, but I'm like, okay, we've got to experience that within like the last, you know, within our, our generation. Not that, I mean, it feels not that long ago, but it's, it's getting now a little bit distant. From it is. It's good. Yeah, we're closing know, in on a decade, which yeah. is crazy. But yeah. man, I would love to see the Kraken just first year just show up and win the championship. I mean, it's doable. That would be insane. Vegas went to the finals in their first year. So this isn't like crazy yeah. talk. This is something that is actually could happen. I mean, it's it's a, it's definitely a long shot, but, you know, still not. It's not like saying the Sabres are going to win this year. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> that would be insane. As a, I mean, hockey is my number one sport. I'm a lifelong hockey fan. The fact that we finally have a team, that like, means the world to me. So to be able to witness that on the first go around would be pretty spectacular. But I'm also would not be upset if the Mariners ended up going. You know, it's like you'd like to see the Mariners go, but then it's like we have all this great like so much of our comedy content will be gone if they actually become a good team. <laughs> like, I mean, I thought that, really, <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. The Mariners are the Mariners are becoming the old Cubs, the old Red Sox. I mean, I mean, right, take the, a look the at them. Losers. They've never been to the World Series. Even the Cubs and Red Sox could say they have been to the World Series. They just and and Red Sox and Cubs have both won World Series long before their droughts. The Mariners have never been they are slowly but surely becoming like yeah the joke of baseball as far or or the or the sad sacks of baseball uh man you give them another 10 to 15 years of not going to the world series and they will yeah they they will be a notable team for that oh we got a text from our friend rocky the seawolf what the f no seawolves on that list for a seattle team to go (laughs) back to back hey we were just reading a text rocky to take it up with the texter but you're right although the seawolves are having a rough year i don't know if he wants to bring that up but they're not oh are they they, is a tough one for them yeah Yeah, they haven't really had a very solid season oh that's okay he's right they have had back-to-back championships (laughs) yeah but that that's even still i mean those are recent aren't they yeah yeah yeah, so I mean, uh, sorry, Rocky, but you know, I yeah, mean, sorry, we're, Rocky. Yeah, we're, li- <laughs> you know, that's why we put the Storm and the Sounders off the list because of recent championships. Oh, Rocky, here's a question for you: What if the Kraken come knocking on your door and said, "Hey, we want Rocky to be our mascot, but you got to oh, leave the Sea Wolves"? What are you going to do? Can you double dip like that? I mean, uh, the, the no, seasons they, no, cross they, over. They, they don't. They want a monogamous uh, mascot. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. 
That's a good point. Because, yeah, because if they you, – you, yeah, what's he going to do? Because if they get to the playoffs and they've got, you know, because the seasons cross over a little bit, that's not cool. Yeah. Uh, I guess Rucky will have to go. He'll have to. How do you turn down being the mascot for the first NHL team? Uh, well, I, I guess, I mean, I don't know if they were NHL back in the Metropolitan. Yeah, they were. So for the first NHL team in Seattle, I mean, how do you turn that down? You don't. That's what's up, Rocky. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I'll be your agent. Yeah. Oh wow, that's you're the aggressive agent. Look, okay, I have nothing but love for the Seawolves, but it's time yeah. for Rocky to s- jump in the water and swim on over to Climate Pledge Arena to <laughs> hang out with the Kraken. Wow. I, uh, here's my question for you, though. I mean, as the backup to the backup to the backup goalie, do you have time to be an agent? I mean, you, you know, you, uh, you, well, you have your duties. I mean, I feel like I'm, I'm being forgotten by the Kraken, so you know, yeah, I, is I think point. I got to make a transition and, and, and retire as a goalie. Ah, <laughs> time to pivot. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know that Jerry Bruckheimer broke your heart. Said you'd give me the first member, and you, you haven't been recognized. No, nope, no, nope, no yep. mention of me when they, nothing. No, they don't even yeah. follow me on Twitter. They clearly yeah. don't like me. They don't even follow you on Twitter. Oh, wow, it's it's a sad yeah. time, BJ. Wow, I didn't realize I mean, that. Then the, you are being ghosted. Then the, I didn't realize that. Yeah, it's so you're being ghosted. They're Times are to, tough, man. Yeah, no they, respect. They, they probably were like, Mr. Bruckheimer, oh, with all due respect, we are ghosting Mr. Miggs. He probably left the studios after he put that uh, put out that offer and, and the Liwikis and everyone's like, what the F were what, you what, thinking? What are you doing? Jerry! No, I mean, uh, have you seen the guy play? Uh, Rucky just texted and said, I'm loyal to my boys. See Wolves forever. Aw. Oh, wow. Well, you know what? Our relationship, our business relationship is now over. <laughs> yeah. I, can't, I feel I can't like work with a client that's not willing to at least entertain the opportunity to play, be the mascot you know of the NHL. There are some other boys he can be loyal to, and that would be the Benjamin boys, okay? He can be loyal to them as well, <laughs> if, especially if somebody wants to offer some dollar. You know what I, I mean? Which mascot do we, we want to see in a fight with Rocky? <laughs> wow. Gritty, always gritty. Oh, is, this gritty. A, is this a texter's question or just from your brain? From my brain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, a three Which way? Ma- the Moose versus Rocky versus Gritty. Oh. I think Gritty wins every time. Gritty beats all the mascots. I don't no know, No offense, man. Rocky, but I, mean, I know you work out and you're in good shape, but Gritty's not... You don't want to mess with Gritty. He's got Except, chaos energy. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Especially did if Gritty knock over a kid yeah. once in like a picture? Yeah, yeah. he did. Yeah. What about yeah. Gritty versus uh, Tungus? Oh. oh. I thought I they were like, the same guy. I, I feel like they might be related. That's what I'm to. saying. <laughs> and it could be like a family squabble. I don't think we could do that. That's very that's rude of us to put them in a situation. <laughs> Tumkus, though, Tumkus just seems like he's very high. That's the difference. I mean, Gritty, Gritty seems like he's on another uh, substance. You know, they both seem like they're on a yeah. substance, but uh, Tumkus' substance is a lot more Seth Rogeny. Yeah, and, Gritty uh, looks like he's like at peak performance on Molly. Yeah. <laughs> His eyes are bugging. He's yeah. shaking his ass. And yeah. Tungus just looks like he got some good indica. And yeah. he's, and he's yeah. hanging out yeah. at the convenience store that he has his name attached to eating everything. That is disturbing that Gritty is actually uh, giving us a butt dance there. Uh, yeah. I would do anything for that yeah. to be our yeah, He's twerking his, his grid off. I mean, that is, uh, wow. Dude, I, you know, I, I was yeah. watching the, uh, <laughs> the, the Canadians, uh, cracking game last night and they, you know, show all the pomp and The Canadians said, cracking game last night. Where were you in the future? <laughs> wow. Canadians, oh, well, yeah, right. Vegas Golden Knights. I said wow. cracking because I was thinking about our team. All because right. the, the, all the pomp and circumstance at, in Vegas before they play with all the crazy, the yeah. crazy show that they put on, you know, we had the guy that's the, that was the director of putting that all together for the, Vegas Gold Knights is now the director to do that for the Kraken. So oh, nice. I, I only hope that it's on that level because it's just like a party. It looks so much fun, man. Like, the place was just rocking. Grin didn't win. But it's got to be. I know that we've had a texture or two complain about that, but it's got to be that cool. It's got to really, really it has will be. to be. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole idea. You don't hire that guy that came from Vegas and then be like, we want it to be very traditional. It's like, well, why'd you hire me? I'm the guy that makes everything go crazy. And I want to see that every, I really want to see that every home game, or at least maybe a Saturday or Sunday home game. So, you know, so it's got to be a tradition beyond just the first day, because those, those entrances and those openings are so cool. Oh, I think they would do it every game. Yeah, I, I love that. I mean, for the most part, they're like a couple of minutes, and it just gets you amped up before the players come out. Exactly. And and no other sport does it, and I think that's why it, it really is cool, is because it really does get you into the mood of like, you're about to see a spectacle. Someone asked uh, about, speaking of the Kraken, what would you guys get? If you get a jersey, are you going with a player or, or your own name? Oh, boy. Oh, I'm going with one. my own name. Own name. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I might do both because I'm just a glutton of for will. financial sure. Home and away, right? Yeah. I don't know any players. And, and Being a new, newer hockey fan at that point, even if we get like, 
you know, somebody great. I don't know them. So yeah. have one, I'm not a fan of anyone yet. You kind of have to fall in love with a player first. Huh? Right. Okay. Right. See, that's why I would like, I think I would currently, whoever the first player is, and I think we have already established who that is, I want that person's jersey because that's something I could have forever and wear as, as, a, as a piece. But the guy you know, that they signed, there's a good chance he won't be playing on the team. I mean, in the first Does he season. have a number yet? Whoever, whoever gets the first number. number. Yeah, whoever we get who has a number. A, I feel like that's a really bad decision on your financial end, BJ. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> Wait a second. There's you no got... guarantee this guy's even going to be a guy for the team. Like, just oh, because he was the first history. guy. history. He was the first guy signed, but he wasn't their first pick in the draft. I could almost see that. Because that's I mean, the guy well, that... all right. You know what? The first pick in the draft, I, I might, I could see your logic there. That it's... still accomplishes the same thing for me. And I'm not poo pooing this guy. Uh, like, obviously, there's hope that he will be good, but like, He's just a guy that ended up not making much waves with the team that he originally was drafted by, so he was able to be signed. The first draft pick is a great. I think twenty five, you know, twenty five to thirty years from now, that would be a good little trivia piece. Like, who the hell? What are you wearing on your back? And say, oh, this is the first guy they legitimately drafted that was theirs. You know, the one they get from the draft, not from the expansion, but from the you know the college, the college or the junior draft. Right, right. Yeah, that's the, I think that's a better idea, Steve. I'm going to go with you on that. Okay. Because I love a piece that's got a little meaning to it beyond just, you know, my name or just some, you know, like whatever, some player. It's like, oh, because then you could wear it forever. You know what I mean? It won't, it won't ever be done, even if he's off the team, because he was the first. That's right. at least my, that's what my brain tells me. I could see that. But I was going to say, don't, don't just grab someone who just got signed by the team first, because there's no guarantee he'll even be on the team. So I got I to gotta get rid of my Migs jersey that I got, though? That's what you're saying? <laughs> I told you it was a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You did. It was a, you but did. it's a goalie one. It's nice. Yeah, it is. And I told you I wasn't going to actually go with number 69, and you still made it done. I feel like <laughs> that, you know, that would have been you, and if you had an opportunity, you would choose that number. There's no way you wouldn't. You would ask. There's no way you don't ask. You know, you got to, right? I don't know how many players are really clamoring for 69 in hockey. Well, you mean, oh, you mean on the ice. Yes, I see. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Hey, uh, here's a question for you. What do Ryan Castle and a wedding crasher have in common? I'm going to tell you at 9.50 on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. And now, the Ryan Castle question of the day. What do Ryan Castle and a wedding crasher have in common? I'll do some shady stuff for Prime Rib. <laughs> oh, you will. Yeah, you will. You and me both, especially if they give me that horseradish. Serious. Did you have prime rib at your wedding, Steve? I did. I did. feel like you did, yeah, because I, I remember thinking, wow, that's really nice of him to have prime rib at his vegan wife's wedding. I know. It was pretty <laughs> awesome, right? <laughs> yeah, I know uh, I know you had prime rib because Ryan was doing some shady stuff for it. So I did some I, shady stuff for yeah, it. That's yeah. true. I remember specifically. It was like, ooh, yeah, Ryan must be going. Yeah. Me, the magician, and the ice sculpture. That's how Ryan... <laughs> wait, 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 I shouldn't talk wow. about that in the air. That was yeah. very yeah. That's things uh, disappeared. That's, yeah, they're making did. stuff disappear. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> wow, and wow. Okay, that's pretty cool. hey, we got two guys Hello. in Ohio. They decided to crash a wedding on Saturday and ended up regretting it. Uh, 29-year-old Justin, 22-year-old William. They showed up to a wedding in Ohio. They tried to steal some beer. And uh, when the groom tried to stop him, William said, I'll start fighting you. And he started swinging, landed a punch. But then uh, a bunch of wedding guests came in and just started wailing on the guys. And, uh, you know, William ended up with a serious black eye in his mugshot. Really all swollen shut because, well, he's an idiot. What are you doing, man? Yeah, what do you do? Maybe take a beer. Don't take the whole case. Ryan Castle, he's got a 12 pack, and that's up next. BJ and Miggs play of the day. What was that moment you thought, oh, I'm so happy with what just happened? Yesterday, I got the phone call that I got my dream job. Congratulations. Thank you. Can't really tell you too much because I haven't good. exactly quit my other job yet. <laughs> oh, okay. They want us to call them right now. We could quit on the air. Oh, <laughs> It is a service we provide, uh, which we've just started providing now. Yeah, it's a new thing we're doing. DJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. How much does bankruptcy cost? Well, bankruptcy costs, of course, vary depending on what type of uh, case you're filing. There's a certain amount of, of, of court costs and other out-of-pocket costs that you're going to have in any case. Uh, the, the filing fees in a bankruptcy case are, are about $300, whether you file Chapter 7 or Chapter 13. 
uh, one of the things to watch out for when you're shopping for bankruptcy attorneys or, or looking at the different cost options is that a lot of times, especially the really cheap uh, places, don't tell you up front about the, all the court costs and whatnot that you're going to have to pay in addition to the attorney fees. So make sure that you get the full picture when you're talking, when you're comparing prices of bankruptcy lawyers on what the attorney fees are, how much your court costs are going to be so that you can really make a true comparison. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org.